Hi, welcome to this series of teaching videos from Stroke and Neurovascular Interventions Foundation. And today we are going to talk about what are the indications to treat asymptomatic patients with carotid artery stenosis and when should we do revascularization in these patients. So what is the evidence that we should be treating them even when they don't have symptoms? The first trial which really showed the positive outcome was the endotretinib for asymptomatic carotid artery stenosis trial, the ACAS trial, published in 1995, which showed that the risk of stroke in medical therapy patients was 11% versus 5.1% in surgically treated patients and it showed the benefit. The more recent evidence has been from the ACST1 trial, which was a multi-center randomized trial, which showed that the gain of 4.1% at 5 years and 4.6% at 10 years in the patients treated with revascularization versus treated medically. But then what is India's state? Uh, many doctors feel that the medical therapy has improved significantly and there have been publications which have argued in favor of medical therapy over revascularization. But one has to understand that a lot of evidence has also come in that the recent uh, that the uh, that the that the recent procedures they have a low complication rate of revascularization based on operator experience and technology and that we have got various means to identify high risk patients as well. So what was the risk of stroke in the published trials by revascularization? The major trial has been the CREST trial of more than 2,500 patients. And in the carotid artery standing arm, the periprocedural CVA rate was 4% or so, but the risk of periprocedural major CVA was less than 1%. While, how is it now? In the ACST2 trial, it has been found that less than 1% risk in the surgical and stenting arm. So clearly the results are much better. And this has been shown by the sub-analysis of CREST patients as well, in which what they found was as the trials went on and the years passed on, the risk of stroke kept dropping and I guess mainly because of the better patient selection and operator experience, with the risk dropping to less than 2% in the last years of trial. And particularly the risk of death or major stroke in carotid artery stenting patients for symptomatic patients dropped to 0% last in the last few years. So clearly, the results have gotten better with uh, passing years. But how to select the high risk patient, that which patient would really benefit? It's based on many features, including plaque morphology, microembolic signals, progression of stenosis, silent infarctions, and the hemodynamic features. So, the high risk asymptomatic carotid stenosis, the paper published in Neurology in 2011, in which they found when TCT showed more than two microembolic signals in one hour and 3D ultrasound showed more than three hours, so the risk of stroke was much higher than when these features were absent. To the TUNO, when the TCD positive patients, they had risk of 20% risk of strokes in the next three years, vis a vis 1.7% when it was absent, and when ulcers were present, 18% risk of stroke versus 2% when it was, the feature was absent. And these patients were on medic, maximal medical therapy. Similarly, publications have shown that the ultrasound not plaque equilibrium and emboli signals predict stroke in asymptomatic carotid stenosis. To the tune of tenfold increase risk of stroke when both these conditions were present with an annual risk of 9% or so, which is very high. Intraplaque hemorrhage has also been shown that increased risk of two to three fold uh, increased risk in the patient when the plaque hemorrhage was absent. And MRI, as the images show, is one of the convenient way to detect intraplaque hemorrhage. Microembolic signals in isolation have been shown to increase the risk of 10 to 18.5% risk per year vis a vis 1% when it is absent, and this has been shown in multiple publications. Impaired vasomotor reactivity and cerebral blood flow patterns which basically are linked to the cerebral hemodynamics have been shown to link of uh, increased risk of stroke. And this was one of the papers published in 2000 in which they found the breath holding index of less than 0.69 and with more risk of stroke in these patients to the tune of 13.9% per year vis a vis 4.1% when it was absent. Similarly, the collateral pathways 
like when there is good anterior and posterior communicating arteries then the stroke risk is less as compared to when these good collaterals are absent and degree of stenosis has been shown that when less than 80 percent stenosis there is much less risk which increases really significantly when there is more than 90 percent stenosis in these patients progression of stenosis is a very significant feature and this is one of the recent papers published in stroke in 2013 which showed that when there was in a year progression of asymptomatic stenosis that 21.7 percent experience in epilepsy stroke that is very high rate similarly silent cerebral infarction this shows that the although patient hasn't really suffered from obvious symptoms the plaque is an active plaque and is thromboemboli has been shown to increase risk of infarction and with more than 8.5 fold higher risk in these patients and multiple papers have shown this feature so where do you stand in terms of guidelines? The American Heart and American Stroke Association guidelines say that more than 70% stenosis in an asymptomatic patient, one should do revascularization if you think the risk of procedure is less than 3%, although the effectiveness is not really been well, very well established. At least in this patient, we should follow by repeat duplex ultrasonography annually to look for progression of stenosis. And one of the best papers in this regard has been published in Stroke Journal in 2014 and how to identify which patients will benefit. And just to repeat, it is based upon microemboli signals, plaque morphology, vasomotor reactivity, silent functions and progression of stenosis. So what would I do in my daily practice? So if I have a patient like this, 65 year old male who is otherwise pretty active, is on hypertensive and Doppler shows big ulceration severe stenosis with no good collateral flow, I would seriously consult this patient about doing a revascularization procedure. Thank you.